Okay, there are four factors, environmental factors, that affect the rate of transpiration. So there is a question over here, it says, is the rate of transpiration of plants in the desert? Okay, di kawasan gurun and in the tropical rainforest, hutan hujan tropika, different. Adakah dia punya kadar transpirasi tumbuhan itu berbeza? So you have to imagine these two places that they are two different places with different environmental factors. For example, kalau di gurun, surely the relative air humidity itu adalah rendah. Okay, air humidity maksudnya dia kelembapan udara tu adalah rendah maksudnya dia panas sikit. Okay, dan juga dia punya temperature definitely is higher as compared to tropical rainforest. So, are these factors going to affect the rate of transpiration of the plants? What do you think? There's another question here saying, does the polluted surrounding affect the rate of transpiration? Okay, what do you think? So, we have to look into the four environmental factors which are number one is the light intensity so this is a graph from the graph here it tells us that the, the higher the light intensity the higher the rate of transpiration so from the graph here it tells us that they are relatively proportional but then there is a horizontal level over here and this tells us that even though you keep on increasing the light intensity, up to this point, rate of transpiration can no longer increase. Why is that so? We say it has become constant. And we know that apart from light intensity, they might be uh, affected by other factors such as air humidity, temperature, and air movement. Okay, so these are the four factors. So these three other factors apart from light intensity, now they already come become the limiting factors. Okay, the next factor is temperature. From the graph here, it tells us when you increase the temperature, again, you see the increase in the rate of transpiration. And why is that so? It is related when you explain, you must include the terms kinetic energy of what of water molecules so that means the water molecules which is within the leaf okay in the condition of uh, increased temperature they will increase the this will increase the kinetic energy of the water molecules so if the kinetic in energy increase Okay, in kinetic energy means it is related to movement. So they will move out, diffuse out. And therefore, this explains why it increases the rate of transpiration. Okay, that means the water will be lost to the surrounding in the form of water vapor. Okay, the next, the third factor is relative air humidity. And from the graph here, you can see that when you when the relative air humidity increase the rate of the transpiration will decrease okay so it is inversely proportional unlike the previous two okay why is that so because now you have to understand what is the meaning of relative air humidity Kelembapan udara secara relatif. This one refers to the air humidity, that means the, the air that is at the surrounding. When the air humidity is relatively low, relatively low, that means dalam keadaan yang panas sikit, kurang lembab. What will happen is that water vapor, which is within the leaf, they will escape from the stoma faster. Okay, meaning, kamu bayangkan, ah, di sini ada ah, daun, kemudian kelembapan udara tu adalah rendah. Maksudnya dalam keadaan um, yang panas sikit, yang bukan nak hujan. Jadi, di, di sekeliling udara ini, 
molekul air di udara-udara berdekatan dengan daun ini adalah kurang. So, maksudnya, molekul air yang ada dalam daun ini, dia senang untuk bebas ke sekeliling sebab banyak ruang kosong. Banyak ruang kosong sebab apa? Sebab dia punya A, humidity pada masa itu rendah. Okay, jadi that's how you see there is um, an inversely proportional punya relationship. Dia senang escape ke sekeliling sebab sekeliling kurang molekul air. Okay, the, the fourth one is air movement ataupun pergerakan udara meaning kalau ada angin, kehadiran angin perlahan ataupun uh, sikit angin, kelajuan udara. So, from the graph here, it tells us when the wind speed is high, the rate of transpiration also high. Okay, ini senang saja sebab movement of air, bila angin tu bergerak-gerak, dia akan bawa, dia akan tiup sekali, dia akan bawa bersama water molecule yang ada pada kawasan udara itu. Contohnya ini daun. Kawasan sini kemudian ada angin bertiup, dia akan bawa molekul udara ini ke tempat lain. Jadi di sini tempat kosong. Ada tempat kosong, daun di sini, molekul air di dalam daun itu akan senang untuk diffuse out. Okay, that's why. Okay, that's why faster air movement, higher rate of transpiration. Okay, there is an experiment here to count the rate of transpiration using this formula. Okay, jarak pergerakan gelembung udara in cm divided by time in minutes. So, these are the four factors. Okay, this is the setup apparatus. It is called the potometer. Okay, so this is the air bubble. Okay, gelembung udara dalam uh, tube ini, tube kapilari ini. This is the plant. Mesti cari yang banyak daun sebab we want transpiration to happen. So, you place it in this four condition. Contohnya, pergerakan udara di bawah kipas. Kamu pasang kipas speed paling tinggi. Laju. Then, you observe jarak uh, pergerakan gelembung udara ni. That's why you have a ruler over here to observe berapa cm sudah dia bergerak. Dan, bila masa dia bergerak banyak, Adakah masa kipas speed itu paling tinggi ataupun adakah masa kamu tidak pasang kipas itu, dia bergerak lebih banyak. So, by getting all those data, you substitute into this formula and you will be able to count the rate of transpiration and therefore you see whether uh, it can prove the hypothesis just now yang kita sudah bincang uh, empat environmental factor okay on how are they related all right